And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to talk about a little game called The Outcast Heroes. Now, The Outcast Heroes is about a time in 1944 when there was some rebellion against the government that the communists put in place over the Polish resistance. And the Polish resistance eventually faded out. Um, at least the organized, but there was unorganized people, and they were called cursed soldiers, and they had this wolf symbol, and you'll see that wolf symbol a lot over the course of this game. You control several of these soldiers over the course of this game, and you're trying to get the most glory points. Let's take a look at how the game plays. The mechanisms of this game are a little wonky, but uh, I'll try to explain a little bit of them the best I can. Each player is going to have a bunch of soldiers who are working for them, and each of these soldiers has a different ranking at the top, and it also shows their combat strength. Now, this whole game is a little confusing sometimes because the backs of all the cards are wolves, which is thematic, but you have to remember uh, sometimes which deck is which. Now, what you're going to be doing over the course of this game is you're going to be sending these soldiers out on missions. Soldiers are going to be at a few places. One time, if they're in uh, headquarters, they are basically placed on a table in front of you. Uh, they can also be in your hand. They can also be in jail, uh, and, or they can be dead, which means they're removed from the game. Now. Uh, during most course of the game, there's going to be multiple missions. This mission is starts the game out here with a jailbreak, but there are other missions, and you can see the difficulty of each of these missions. When you send a soldier on a mission, you can actually place one soldier on the three sides, where they will either, um, over here on this side, they're a re uh, reconnaissance, over here they're the liaison, here they're the commander, but you can put as many as you, as you want under here, underneath strike force. Now, each soldier who goes on the mission is going to help that mission succeed or fail due to their combat strength, so some soldiers will be better than others. Now, the mission has a strength of 9, this particular one, but also, when the mission is... Uh, when a mission happens, you're going to turn a card over and add this card. Now, that card is going to add to the strength of the mission. This would make it a 13. But it also can have a negative effect. Like, for example, um, here there's, there's a, a, a manhunt. Any soldier who's wounded in here is going to go to jail. Or this one here, an informer. The commander uh, may discard this card. If he does so, though, he loses a glory point. So one of these is going to be added, and if you have a player, if a player has put a soldier here, they get to look at the top two and pick one of these to see which one goes there. You say, well, of course they'll pick the easiest one, but that is not necessarily the case, because in each round, players are going to be given like a secret card that they will have, and most of these cards will give you bonus points, like this one gives you two extra glory points, if at the end of the stage none of your soldiers are in jail. Okay, no problem. But this one here gives you two points and an extra glory point if all three missions ended in the hero's failure. So it's possible that a player will want a mission to fail. So you can put uh, someone here on the scout side or on the reconnaissance side to look and see which of these cards are coming. If the card is successful, then it gives a, the player a special ability, like for example this one you can dis, uh, discard, discard later on, add two to a future mission. The person who gets that is the person in the liaison spot. The commander has an important spot because they're going to be handing out glory points. There's a lot of cards with glory points. These points are one, twos, and threes here. And at the beginning of the mission, the commander will draw one for each uh, soldier in the mission. And he's going to give these cards to the different players after looking at them. And so that might determine how much you're going to help in that particular mission. Players are also going to be playing cards, orders cards, on each of their people. They'll place these orders face down on each person. What the order card will do is it will add to the strength of that soldier and also tell you what happens to the soldier in that fight. That soldier can be wounded. That soldier, you know, this one adds plus two, but that soldier is killed. That soldier may run away and not add any strength at all. So you have possible of these, and the cards that are down in the soldiers get uh, more cards to draw from so they can decide which ones. So there's different spots. If you, in this spot, you can, you can control what happens on a mission, who gets the glory points. And over here, 
the liaison gets a special ability, and then the reconnaissance guy can pick the card, and then down here the soldiers will actually do better over the course of battle. So in each round of the game, players are going to be doing a few actions. They can add a soldier to one of these spots on the board. They can take a soldier who is in uh, the area in front of them and add that soldier to their hand from, from their headquarters. So if I have a couple soldiers in my headquarters, I can add one of those to my hand. Or they can try to take over the top spot. If I have a soldier down here, maybe let's say, for example, I have a soldier down here and there's a, this private here in the top spot. I can take his spot from him because I'm a higher rank than he is. So those are the actions that players will be doing. They will be doing these and keeping track on these little scorecards that go from 1 to 21 and you can flip them and they go from 22 to 42 and you'll keep track with a, a little black cube here. So there's a little bit more going on in the game, but that's essentially how the game is going to work. You'll bid for turn order by giving up a guy from your hand who then goes to your, your headquarters. So you're constantly trying to complete missions, or at least complete your, so your goal card, and complete missions, which give points. You want to uh, be at strategic places in the mission to help you out the best way that you can, and uh, not have too many of your guys get killed or go to jail, and if they do go to jail, try to bust them out of jail, etc. That's a little bit of a flavor of how the game works. Let's talk about what I think. If there was one word I would describe this game with, it's convoluted. There is a lot of cool ideas in this game, but those ideas are kind of at odds with the game's production. I mentioned the wolves and the difficulty of remembering which deck is which. It is mind boggling to remember which card does which, to remember which symbol does which. There are symbols everywhere and they're not intuitive. I mean, well, some of them are. I guess the skull meaning death, that, that's kind of useful. But I can you can never remember which deck goes where. You can put the deck here and say, this is the orders deck. And then what's the orders deck again? It would have been really useful if they maybe had written the words on them or something, but they all have wolves on them in different wolf poses. And you're like, oh, is that the wolf hand or was it the growling wolf? So that's really confusing. It will add a lot to the difficulty of people playing the game. Not to mention the game itself just has a lot of things going on. You have soldiers from your hand to put them here, and depending on where you put the soldier, it gives you special abilities. Now, all of this is actually a good thing for the game. It has some interest because of that, but it is just difficult for players to be able to do that. I love the theme of this game. The Polish Freedom Fighters is a great theme. I love the idea of uh, being able to put cards in different positions. You know, the one you can see what's coming, another one you get to play more cards. The order cards are neat, and I, and I, here's the deal, I think the game is good. I just think that that goodness is gonna be covered up for many people due to difficulties in figuring out what goes where. I mean, from the scorecard with a cube on it, which can be knocked around, to uh, cards going in different spots, to not being able to even look at a card and instantly see how strong a soldier is, the numbers. <laughs> Ah, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm a little disappointed, really, because I think the game is good, but it's never going to see a wide audience. Now, maybe with a complete graphical overhaul, the theme can stay the same. Theme is great. A complete graphical overhaul and maybe some cheat sheets that remind you what all the little symbols do, that would help this game dramatically. And even then, it would still be, there's a lot going on in this box. I mean, there's a lot of little things. It's kind of like mixing games of Werewolf and the Resistance with uh, card placement. There's a lot of ideas in this box. And it would still be more difficult, but I think it'd be easier for people to play. I enjoy it. it what you're supposed to do doesn't come naturally. The fact that there's a traitor can be kind of a big deal, but in other, other battles, there might not be a traitor. Which battles are you gonna help in? You're kind of working together, but not really. Like I said, that theme comes across very strongly, but I think for most people, they should pass on it because they'll be frustrated with the gaming experience. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.